Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from CB Rampage. He says, US Army 11B Infantry Loadout, M4, Hollow Sight, Vertical Grip, Laser Sight and Light Combo, Heavy Barrel, for sidearm, we have the M9 with a flashlight on there, medic bag, M320 grenade launcher, M67 grenade, offensive field upgrade. Please pick this level. I type the same thing every Monday. And I'll admit I was pretty excited to try this loadout because the M4 was one of the best carbines available in Battlefield 3, so I wanted to see how it translated to BF4. I really didn't use it very much up until this loadout. As you can see, I'm still unlocking parts for the gun. I'm using the wrong hollow sight on there. The next clip or so should have all the attachments available there, and I'll be using the actual proper loadout. But I also uh, was excited to use this loadout because it really is one of the staple weapons in pretty much the US military. Uh, all branches of it, I think, have uh, the M4 as a pretty standard weapon um, for most soldiers out there. So uh, it's just something that kind of screams US Army, and uh, I've got a lot of nostalgia for the M4. Now, before we start getting into this gun and breaking down the stats and how it plays out and how this class plays out, there is the major, major change from Battlefield 3 to Battlefield 4 with this gun, and that is it's no longer a fully automatic weapon. It has the burst fire mode and no full auto mode, which... To me personally, and I've, I get a feeling for most people out there, is a pretty big downgrade to it. Uh, I don't know many people that actually like burst fire guns in this game. I know people that like, say, the AN-94, but that was still a very difficult weapon to use, and you had to really be on your toes and really practice with it a lot to just kind of be decent with the AN-94, whereas you could pick up anything like an AEK or an M16 and just destroy people with a very small learning curve. So there wasn't a huge reason to try and upgrade to something that was much harder to use and arguably not quite as effective. So essentially we have the burst fire Achilles heel that this gun has and uh, a lot of things have been done to try and make burst fire weapons better in Battlefield 4. The first shot recoil multiplier is actually applied to the last shot of the burst so you're not hitting that that bigger recoil pull until your very last shot which is supposed to give you a more concentrated sense of fire. The heavy barrel again helps out with this and that'll uh, further increase the accuracy of this weapon. And at first I was thinking, you know, laser light combo and vertical grip, which I'm using the ergo grip in this case, but it's exactly the same attachment in terms of how it affects the gun. I wasn't looking forward to that. I was like, oh, why would you want to make the hip fire of this weapon better? Why not just focus on trying to make this gun as accurate as possible? And what I found when uh, playing around with other weapons that were burst fire, like the M16A4, is that no matter how much you do to it, it's not going to really affect your performance at range too much. The heavy barrel is a nice little addition, but uh, trying to squeeze the ultimate performance out of there, you're still going to be held back by your burst fire. So um, as long as you're relatively on target with your shooting, the quantity of attachments that you put in there to really just deck out your accuracy isn't going to be a full return. So you may as well try and upgrade other areas of the gun. And I found that playing this loadout, the foregrip and laser sight actually was a great combo because it allowed me to not have to aim down sights and I could hip fire my opponents in close quarter, which with a burst fire weapon, you're going to need any sort of advantage you can get. So not having to take that extra split second to aim down sights and just start burst firing my opponents and take them out was a, a much needed advantage in close quarter combat. I didn't really do too much switching between the laser and flashlight. You know, I think you could get away with the laser sight uh, all, all together just because some maps I like the ability to turn it off, especially when you're playing in more foliage oriented maps where camo actually is important, uh, the laser sight will just give you right away. So having a laser sight that you can turn off versus turning on a flashlight instead of the laser, I think is a little bit more valuable on this specific loadout, but if you're going for the authenticity of the look and feel, then a laser light combo will give you that. We have the M67 frag grenade as our grenade of choice, which is unfortunate. I do like the M67 in the sense that it reminds me a lot of how I think Battlefield should 
should be played right now. Instead, we have a lot of stuff like the uh, uh, the um, M40s, which are the mini grenades. You get three of them. You can throw them real far, so by the time they're ready to detonate, they're right on your opponent, and they have no warning at all. And they're just so much better than the M67, but I think the game has been become way too nade spammy. I think it's really hurting the infantry combat, and it makes me think about getting my own server and disabling M40s and RGO impact grenades just to turn off some of the crazy grenade spam that we're getting and let us get back to the basics of infantry fighting. The M320 is an excellent gadget. The only thing it's got going against it is that it's competing with stuff like the medic box and defibrillator. So if you gotta sacrifice one of those for the M320, can be a little bit tricky, although I really do enjoy running the medic box and M320 and just giving up on defibrillators, especially in game modes like Domination where your team's tickets aren't as dependent on them dying, rather on the capture points. So if you got something a little bit more destructive like an M320 that can clear out an area and allow you to capture it, uh, then I find that that's a little bit more fun to use in Domination versus defibs. I'll certainly never give up my medic box though, I still think that is the most useful gadget in the entire game. You, If you watch my gameplay, you know, you'll see I chuck it down all over the place, I'll throw it down at a corner before I get there in preparation for a firefight. Just being able to heal a little bit of health in the middle of a firefight is the difference between um, getting sh killed in four shots and getting killed in five shots. And it'll often allow you to win a firefight or heal up fully before somebody comes back around a corner. So you can just go through so much health using a medic box properly. Overall, I enjoyed the loadout. The only time I wasn't feeling it is when I was going up against people using the Ace-23 or the AEK, you know, weapons that are just far superior to this one. There's no getting around the fact that it is a burst fire gun. Give it a try, guys, and don't forget to leave your comments for the next episode of Loadout. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.